Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of September 19th, 2022, and I'm back in the home studio with my regular experts, Justin Binning and Ken Timmons. Both Justin and Ken are from American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome back to the podcast, gentlemen. Thanks, Molly. Hey, Molly. How are you? Good, good. Guys, guys, BCMC. Amazing, right? Like, amazing? Awesome trip. Yeah, great to uh, great to see so many people. I mean, that was the best turnout we had ever, right? Second, Pretty best. close. I think 2006 was our very highest, but yeah, this was our one of our very largest shows. Lots of things to... If you weren't there, major FOMO. <laughs> no, great show. Uh, I mean, just, yeah, well, well orchestrated. Um, a lot of connections. I can say great to see a lot of uh, familiar faces and then also meet a lot of new faces and some of the new tech that's going on. And, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Great trip. Yeah, good times. And, you know, we were talking right before we fired up the recording. It's always good to get home too, right? Like sleep in your own bed and sitting back at your desk. I was saying how good it felt to go get groceries, do something real normal. So that's good too. And you guys are back on the trading floor. Yep. That's right. We made it all in one piece. Excellent. Excellent. Well, with that in mind, why don't you tell me what's been going on in the last couple of weeks? Sounds like we've got some news to share. Yeah. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah. I mean, um, micro markets all across the country, but I'd really say kind of the news to share is almost a lack of news. Things have been going no. on and, okay. um, you know, at the BCMC during our live podcast, we talked quite a bit about uh, rail strike and, you know, the warehouser mills are striking and fire. Yeah, right. Our yeah. burnt to the crisp, all sorts of stuff like that, which you would typically expect to carry a uh, more significant weight in the pricing and availability of lumber products. But really, um, those those factors have been smoothed into the market pretty normally. They haven't caused great ripples by any means. Well, like pins, uh, some pins and needles in terms of the 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 rail strike, right? I mean that that's the kind of the last thing we need you know, with inflation and where we're at economically. Yeah. And so a lot of people obviously had their eyes on that. And that was, you know, crisis averted in the 11th hour there on that uh, end of that last week. Um, But then in coming to this week, we had a large mill out of Western Canada that announced curtailments to the end of the year, totally 200 million board fee. And so it's like you saw pushing the board, Hmm. you know, and all of that with a strong housing report as well, coupled with that. Hmm. And it gave some life to the board and we all kind of thought, well, maybe this will be the catalyst to really get the market pushing forward. It doesn't feel that way. Like Hmm. it just doesn't seem to matter what kind of happens. Everyone has this kind of attitude. It's like, (laughs) yeah, whatever. There's no, there's, (laughs) there's no fear in the marketplace. Not that that's wrong. No, but that's, uh, but that's, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, very typically. Uh, not that I think the market's, you know, going to take any monumental leaps and strides and go crazy on us, but typically a market bottoms and goes up when there is no fear, when everyone is 100% comfortable with their ability to secure lumber and very laissez-faire as a group, that is when things start to turn. So interesting. And not that I think it's, we have any tidal wave coming our way anytime soon, but worth taking note of that the lumber market as a group is very, um, unfearful of the future. It feels like we're one step forward, one step back, kind of like, and it kind of is the market itself is just kind of a stair step down from pricing that we've been on. Today, obviously the Fed announced another rate increase. I don't think shocks anybody, but three quarters of a point, but it's good. It's like, you know, one step forward and said, it's like, oh, no, no curtailment, less wood coming in. And it's like, well, Fed raised the point. Right. It kind of like, it just kills any sort of momentum. And again, not to say that we're, there really was mo- much more momentum. I think that when I saw the email, it was kind of like, eh, okay. And then went on to my next email. Like that was my right reaction to that. And I, I wondered, you know, as I, as I start talking to my customers to get their reaction the next day, and it was followed with, uh, in accordance with kind of how I was feeling. Yeah. So it just doesn't, uh, I don't know what catalyst it would take to Catalyst to take to do what, right? What, what are we 
you know, what are we looking for? The market to move up? I don't necessarily know. The market's in a good shape. There's good supply and demand balance, relatively speaking. Again, you have some items that are tougher to cover than other, others. But I just think that we're not in a spot where we're going to get some monumental run in pricing, really, on, on anything. I think the buyer mindset, like we talked about a lot, is they're, they're sticking to their guns and the way that they're managing their inventory and playing it close to the best and staying in a just-in-time model. And they're going to stay that way accordingly and price is secondary and they're not afraid of it, to Ken's point. And it's kind of the same thing we've been harping over, I feel like, week after week, yep. by week after by week. I mean, in general, this sounds like good news, some stability. Again, I know you guys have talked about there being instability continuing sort of in smaller places, but in general, it feels like there is some positive energy around having the market be a little more, is predictable, even the right word, but you know what I mean? Like something like this, it seems like a year ago might have had a much bigger impact. And if it's not today, that feels good from my perspective, but yeah, and I, I like the way you finished with that. And it was funny you, you say good and you know it's like bad. And sometimes I feel like on our podcast here lately we haven't had a ton of you know news to share. Again, I harken back to when we started roughly your early part of 2020, and yeah. um, you know it almost felt like there was something new to talk about. And it was funny talking with our listeners over the week at BCMC, and it's just you know, you know I just enjoy it. Oh yeah, I know you know very thankful and lovely what you guys are doing and. And I said, okay, it's not getting bored or anything. Like, no, no, why would you say that? It's like, well, you know, it just right. it felt like, again, you know, we always had, you know, we started in this crazy market and it's always kind of breaking news. And now it's kind of like, well, not much change. And they're like, yeah, but that's great too. Like, I need to know that. You no know, necessarily good news or bad news. It's just news. And so I, I kind of was like, oh, I kind of took a step back and like, okay, well, no, that's good feedback. And that makes sense. Right. I mean, it is yep. true. Uh, you need to know if nothing's really changing or, or such. So, um, sure. I think it's good just in the sense that we have some stability, stability in a relative price range at this point. And we're finding some quote unquote new normals to some mm -hmm. extent through trading a range. And I think that, um, based on what we think is going to happen in the future in terms of, of housing starts, uh, both single family and then where we look at the multifamily se sector, do it. Do DIY sector. I think we've got a pretty good grasp of what we're looking at for the next 12 to, you know, 15, 16 months. Um, and, and can make some relative assertions on where we think pricing will be stabilized at. And, um, you know, I think we're, we're in a range right now. Um, some could be the higher range of that. Um, and some could be at a medium and even or lower spot in that range right now. Talking a lot of species over a lot of different geographical areas, but you agree? You totally, totally agree. I mean, it's just like, um, for those of the listeners that were at the board meeting after the BCMC, when I gave my quick presentation. I mentioned, you know, there's lots of micro markets. Not all products are trading the same way. Last couple of years, we were very fortunate in the fact that the trend was consistent no matter what. It's either screaming up or screaming down, right? And while that's scary, <laughs> it was easy to manage. Now, I mean, you really got to be paying attention. Things change frequently. I had made a reference at the, at the board meeting that uh, I think cord stock in general out of the West has room to come up high grades and, and whatnot and dug for him for white fur. And, um, you know, I still think that's the case, but you know, even this week I'm seeing some, some high grade dug fur going up in price and some, uh, that's dry, some green dug fur going up in price and the guys at random links even nailed that one too. They even reported it, which is kind of rare. So, you know, while I think the overall market trend is downward, right? We do get these micro markets, these little pops of activity flurries where the, the price, you know, week to week won't always be down. It's definitely a fun market to interact with. I hear a lot of people that have pretty common, um, Comment at the BCMC, someone or a few people had said, oh yeah, flat market, you traders must hate that. And you know, I actually, I view it as a real big blessing. I kind of, first of all, I love the consistency for the end user, especially component manufacturers. We typically buy off usage and um, have, have comfort levels with their inventory. I'm glad to see some reprieve for that um, section of lumber buyer, but also I think it's good for our industry, right? A flat lumber market. While well, traders love volatility, a flat market really, how do I say this? The tie, the tie going to the winner is really 
people with strong relationships continue to do business, which is really important. Um, I think anyone who's listening to this podcast that buys lumber very likely has had a bajillion phone calls from a lot of young lumber brokers or whoever it might be trying to earn their business. And I support that and I love that. But, you know, there's only so much business to go around. And typically in a market like this, the people with the strongest relationship get the business. And I think that's important. I think, um, you know, cementing relationships in our industry is a very, very good thing. And just like I had said at the board meeting too, while right now is calmer and there's no monumental swings of anything going on, in general, our global supply chains are still very, very fragmented. And I do wholeheartedly believe out of the next five years, three of them probably will have crazy swings. So it's a great time right now, whether you are a brand new lumber buyer or you've been doing it for 35 years, phenomenal opportunity while things are quiet to deepen your relationships with both, both your customers and vendors. Or maybe, you know, you're a experienced lumber buyer like uh, Larry Dix, for example, mm -hmm. who's a phenomenal gentleman, great businessman, does a really good job buying lumber for his company. Maybe a, a person like that from each company takes a youngster under their wing. And while it's quiet, they teach them the ropes a little bit, right? Because there will be a day and a time where that torch gets passed and you don't want to pass that torch in the middle of mayhem. So it's a really, really good time for people to establish new relationships, cement their old relationships, and prepare for the future. Because I do think while the podcast right now is tame and market trends are of a smaller magnitude, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say everyone should go doomsday prep, but being forward thinking is a very smart move for any company, regardless of trust, multifamily, pallet guy, lumberyard, whatever it is. I think it's a phenomenal time to be forward thinking. I think that's a really important sentiment, Ken. I mean, that's something that I think our listeners are going to have the opportunity to hear about. Uh, we did record our podcast when we were on stage at BCMC, and um, I'm going to be cutting some of those up into, you know, some listening opportunities for the folks that listen to this podcast as well. And I think you'll hear Larry reiterate that quite frequently uh, and from both of you as well, just that relationship building and taking the opportunities when you can. And this market does feel like a place where people can, not that you don't need to be on your toes, but you can take the opportunity to to start some of those other relationships or, or learning opportunities as well. So I, I think that's great. Before we wrap up, I just want to make sure you guys don't have any final thoughts before we head out for the next couple of weeks? Probably just stick with my same old, same old. Um, you know, if you do get breaking news and stuff like this, I know I uh, talked to one of, one of my customers, good customer of mine. It was kind of funny. He's bright and early calls me. I'm, you know, just got done with my morning meeting and had really yet to get on the phone or, or start my, you know, quote unquote trading day. And uh, he goes, so what's, uh, what's up this, this, can for announcement. You know, what do you think? And I gave him my two cents. He goes, yeah, that's, that's good. What I thought he goes, I had, I had five different guys email me this morning and just kind of freaking out like, Hey, you, you should buy this. Cause this and this and this, and it was kind of odd to me, but it also felt like I was getting sold because of some breaking news, but, but I didn't need anything. Right. Like, and and it comes down to, again, understanding the customer's business and having that relationship instilled. But I guess my point is don't always buy the hype, you know, or, right. or leave the, you know, the hot, the hot item. Oh, this is, you know, this has happened. So this, it's like, there's a lot of guys going to try to sell you just because of some breaking news or whatever. But ultimately, you, you know, I think the, the strategy that's, that's, in place right now is a good strategy for most people in terms of how they're purchasing their lumber. I found it interesting on our, you know, BCMC when we did our live podcast with that question that was posed at the end of our session with, you know, fear, need, and greed as market drivers, right? Mm -hmm. From John. And it was like, who's, who's afraid they can't get lumber in this room today? And right. Uh, like a half a hand. Right. Yeah. I was yeah. just going to say one half hand. <laughs> one yeah. half hand for sure. Um, and yeah. I don't think this is a good or bad thing. It's just, it is what it is, but I think it, it, it goes to show kind of where we're at right now and that's okay. Sure. Before you go, you know, buying off into the next kind of idea that might change the course of kind of where we're at, which I don't think will have much change, you know, to the upside for any extended period or amount. 
stay close to the guys you trust and that are going to give you the, the true information versus information to obtain order. I'm just going to tack onto that real quick, Molly, because I completely agree and I couldn't say better than Justin, but, uh, invest in the future. Pull aside a young guy or gal and teach him something today. You know, I mean, that's one of the best things we can do in life, let alone our, our job responsibilities. If you're listening to this podcast, you definitely have some sort of responsibility in your role, whether it's being a lumber buyer or a trust designer or a owner or, you know, truck driver, doesn't matter. Um, find somebody with, with an open ear and teach them something. Pass on some knowledge. I love that. And with that, we will wrap up our episode for today. Justin, Ken, thank you so much for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I've enjoyed our time together. I'll be a brief and look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Molly. Talk soon. Thanks, guys. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com. 